Today I'm going to show you how to spruce up your vacation photos. <laughs> I love that word. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on flurn.com where we make videos on Photoshop and photography and we make them really fun to learn. We had a really cool episode today. This is actually one of our, our manager here at Flurn uh, just recently took a trip out to the Grand Canyon and got some awesome photos with him. And we're kind of like looking through them and we're like, all right, let's make a great episode out of this because a lot of people are taking vacation photos and sometimes they just, they don't, you know, they, they were like awesome when you were there and you come home and you load them on your computer and you're like, it doesn't look as good as it should. And if you guys are, it's happened to me all the time. So I know what's happened to you. And uh, so today I'm going to show you guys some like quick things you can do. This is going to be the landscape you can do with just about any landscape photo you do. And it's going to really make those photos like go from like straight out of camera to like looking like they belong in a gallery. So it won't take long. Stay tuned. We're about to get into it. So here's our image. This is the Grand Canyon. Let's view it full screen at all its glory. Beautiful. And um, I'm gonna just talk about some of the things that I think we can work on in this image. So we're just gonna grab a brush and then just start circling some things. So basically what we're getting here is a little bit of haze. And anytime you're photographing like something through a lot of air, the little air, you know, water particles in the air like reflect the sunlight and things like that. And that's what makes things look hazy like this. So it's, it's not super crystal clear. Like you can't see through everything and things tend to take a blue tone. Like they look like it's sky, right? Like sky kind of gets in the way. So there's just generally a bunch of haze that we want to get rid of. All right, the next thing what I see is like, it's quite a bit lighter here on the top than it is on the bottom. So I want to equal that out. All right, we're going to zoom in a little bit more and you're going to see that this image is really, it's not that sharp. Like you can see, it, I, I wish it was a little bit sharper. So we're going to look at sharpness as well. All right, and none of these things are like cheating, or whatever. Like these are landscape photographers and things like that. They do this stuff all the time. And then I know like this is supposed to be like a sunset, right? And it's like so blue and sunsets aren't blue like that. All right, so we need to work on our coloring as well. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna turn off that off. I'm gonna show you some great options you can do in a levels adjustment layer or a curves adjustment layer. And I'm gonna play around with the auto settings. So we're gonna go over here to levels. I like levels. You can choose your black point and white point and things like that. You can also hit auto here and it's gonna do a lot of the work for you. Now, some people don't know this and it's a really cool tip. You can actually go to this little drop down box and go to auto options. So if you don't really know a whole lot about how curves work and levels, things like that, you don't, you don't know where to push things and pull things, auto is a great option, but I'm gonna show you guys some things you can do in the auto options to make it even look better. Okay, so you got a few different algorithms here for the auto. You can go to enhance monochromatic contrast, enhance per color contrast, things like that. Now I like this snap neutral midtones option because what this is gonna do is it's gonna help correct our colors as well. So if it's saying like, okay, you got a lot of blue in there, this is gonna take care of that. So here I'm able to like kind of just click through these and see, you know, what are my different options as far as my coloring goes. All right, and I like that. So what we're doing, let's go ahead and hit okay. There's the before and the after with this. You can see it fixed a lot of our problems. I get made, there are points that was just like, you know, like just really too light down here. It, it really did fix that, but it made it a little bit too dark, but it, it doesn't look nearly as hazy. You can see, because that what it, what it did basically, the haze makes blacks not really look black, right? It made the blacks look like a light blue. So what this auto did is it basically made your blacks look like black again. Unfortunately for my taste, it's still a little bit too dark. So what we're, we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a curve adjustment layer Click here in the middle and we'll just drag this up just a bit. I'm gonna hit Command I and then we're gonna use our gradient tool. There we go. And we're just gonna get a white gradient going from the bottom right up there. All right, that looks really nice. If you don't like that, you can just click right here and I hold the shift key and that makes sure I'm going straight up and down. There we go, a nice gradient from the bottom to the top. And you can still see it goes to black but we can still see a little bit of that detail there. Now, I'm gonna do the opposite on the top because we talked about how it's lighter on the top than it is on the bottom. So you can use a curves or a levels adjustment layer. Let's just do a curves for consistency. Click that from the top and then drag down. And now I'm gonna hit Command I and then gonna go from the top down this time. 
OK, so we can see, there we go. Let's just bring that up a little bit more. There we go. So this is basically how it came. This is adding the contrast, but then we wanted to darken the, sorry, lighten the bottom of it and darken the top of it. So you can see like this compared to this, we have a lot more contrast in here and we fixed our color range. So that auto is going to help out a ton. And then if you see anything that you need to change, that's when you're going to go in here and actually make those changes. All right, looking great. So the next thing what we're going to do, let's see, we've taken care of our haze and we've taken care of the top part being light and the bottom part being dark. Let's go ahead and work. We've done a little bit on our color, but I think we can get even more. I want that like really nice golden sunset look. So let's work a little bit more on our color. We're going to group those three. Shift click and hit Command G to group those. OK, now for our color, what I'm going to do is we're going to create another curve adjustment layer. And here, instead of RGB, I'm going to go to my red channel. So you can adjust your colors with curves and levels. Really, really cool. I recommend just spend a ton of time in curves and levels if you have not done so. OK, we're going to grab this, and I'm going to pull it up just like that. So we're going to get a lot of red. And I'm going to go to my blue channel, and I'm going to pull it down, because the opposite of blue is yellow. All right, in this curves adjustment layer dialog anyway. All right, there we go. So now what we have is a nice yellow light, but it's, it's too much, right? It's over everything. And I want this mostly to show up on the highlights. Like I want that light that's hitting, you can see like actually hitting the canyon here. I want that to be the yellow color, but I don't need it to show up there in my shadows. So what we're going to do is I'm going to restrict this to my highlights, and I'm going to do so using Blend Diff. So double click here on your layer, OK, which is going to bring up our layer style. There we go. We can see everything now and hold Alt or Option, and then I'm going to click from the left or the right on my underlying layer, and it's going to make this, basically, this layer invisible where our underlying layer is darker. Super cool. If I were to go right to left, it would start to make it invisible where it's lighter. You can see now the yellow is not showing up where the highlights are. It's showing up where the shadows are, right? So using Blendif is just, it's an awesome, awesome tool. I really recommend getting to know it. It'll, it'll make a huge difference in your editing. There we go. So we'll hit OK. And let's just show you, I'll show you hit Command Z. So there's before where it's just coloring everything. There's the after where it's just coloring the highlights. And here is the layer off. So you can see it makes a huge difference. If you don't like the coloring, it's not a huge deal. Just double click right over here. And you can go back in here and you can change like I want less red or more red. You know, like you can really exaggerate it any way you want to. You can add a little bit of green if you want for a little bit of, you know, well, that just looked horrible. So never mind. Don't do that. All right, there we go. That's, a, that's looking good. OK, so now that we've got some of the color in there, I'm going to add a little bit of like a color flare, just because, just for a little piece of flare, I want to. Um, we're going to grab our gradient tool, G for the gradient tool, and then I'm going to choose my radial gradient. And I'm going to hold Alt or Option now, and I'm going to choose one of these lighter colors that's actually in my image. That's a big tip right there. Like, when you're choosing to add like lens flare and things like that, Choose a color that's actually in your image. It's going to make it look a lot more real. So again, I'm going to go from right all the way to here. And I'm following the direction of the sun. You can see the sun's coming from over here, right? Like it's brighter in this spot, darker over here. So we're going to go from right to left, just like that. I'm going to change this from normal down to screen, which is kind of give us this nice effect there. And then we're going to use that same blend if again. So double click here and hold Alt or Option in the underlying layer. This time, I don't want it to be visible where it's darker again, right? So there we go. And I know this is kind of like adding back a little bit more of that haze, but I like it. I think it's a nice effect. And you can tone this down, whatever you want to. You can adjust the color. If you do, because you know when you make a curves adjustment layer, you can always double click here and then change the curve, right? But if you don't like your curves, if you don't like your color that you drew on a gradient, just click on that layer and hit Command U, and then you can actually do it pretty easily. Like you can change the hue. Like if it was too yellow, I can just go to the left a little bit and change the hue. I could add purple or you know green or something horrible like that. We're not going to, but I did think it was a little bit too yellow, so we can just pull that a little bit more, and we're good to go. There we go. Okay, so we've taken care of our haze. We've taken care of the color. We've taken care of the top and the bottom. We've taken care. Now all we need to do is sharpness, and we're going to be done. And when I show you the before and after this, you're going to freak out. You're going to be like, wow, that was a huge difference. All right, so what we're going to do, here's a cool trick with sharpening. I'm going to create a new layer, Shift Option Command N, and then Shift Option Command E. That's our stamp visible layer, OK? 
And now I'm going to change this from normal to overlay. You can see it doesn't look great yet, but we're going to go to filter, other, and here to high pass. Now, my big trick with this high pass filter is don't try to do all your sharpening with one high pass filter. I'm actually going to, you, you can see, like if you bring your radius higher, it does a little bit more. I'll just zoom in so you guys can see like kind of what it does. The higher you bring your radius, the more sharpening. It tends to look bad the higher you bring it up. So bring it to a point where it looks pretty good and then stop. But I'm gonna actually choose my radius like pretty low where it doesn't seem like it's doing a lot. So I hit okay. We can see it does a little bit, but not a lot. Now here's the cool trick about sharpening. If you duplicate this layer, it's just gonna sharpen more and more and more and more. And then you can figure out exactly how you want it. So I'm gonna hit Command J a few more times. And I prefer like this sharpening with a small radius, I prefer this over just one big sharpen with a large radius. Because each of these, you can see, let's turn that off and back on. That's a huge difference. You, like look at all these like little pieces of lighter areas in the ground. I don't know what that is. Camel crap probably. Uh, let's turn those off and then back on. And you can see how much more they stand out right now. So instead of choosing a, like a large radius, choose something with a small radius and then just duplicate that a bunch of times. We're gonna hit Command J one more time because this is gonna go on YouTube. I just wanna make sure that my point is made. All right, there we go. And we've taken care of everything and that really didn't take too long. So let's go ahead and group all of those things. We'll zoom in and I wanna show you guys the before and the after with this. So here's the before and the after. Huge. This looks like a snapshot that's just taken out of any old camera. This looks like a Windows XP wallpaper. <laughs> Remember back in the day when Windows XP wallpapers were the crap, the shit, the awesomeness? <laughs> the crap. That was just me trying to be PC and not say shit on YouTube. All right. Really cool though, huh? Before and after. So much more dynamic. And you guys can do these steps on any one of your vacation photos, especially these landscapes, and especially when there's some haze in there, it's gonna make them look awesome. Guys, thanks so much for watching our videos. We really appreciate it. If you wanna keep up with us, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can share this with your friends if you have anyone who's interested. And leave us a comment down below because we actually create our episodes, most of them, based on user comments. When people say, I wanna learn how to do this, or I wanna learn how to do that. That's how we get the content for our episodes. So leave a comment down below if there's something you wanna learn. We read those comments and that's how we make our episodes. Guys, thanks again and we'll flirt you later. Dang, that was amazing. I don't even need to go to the Grand Canyon now because the pictures are so vivid and amazing.